which I think may bring us into uh, step number three. Um, when it comes to the, the mental skills, uh, what's step number three, coach? So step number three is something that when I, when I tell people, and sometimes they might think, really, that's, that's step number three, but it's an important one. And, and step number three, and again, key number three, because I have the four keys, four key. is, is understanding your commitment level to what you want to accomplish. And let me explain by saying this. As athletes, we get into sports, young golfers get into golf because they like golf. They have a natural ability. Uh, they're good at it. When they're good, we get praised. We like it. We feel good. We get into it. We want more of that. And then so forth, so forth, right? As we develop and things become more competitive, we really need to up the ante in terms of our commitment level. And so one of the things that, and I'm going to see if I could share my screen with you here is that most athletes, most coaches, and us as parents, I raise my hand because I'm a parent as well, is that we're great at helping our athletes. And let me know if you could see this here. Can yes, you see we that? can see it, coach. Yep. So this is the four corner athlete development model. So athletes, coaches, and, and parents, we're great at committing to the doing part of an athlete's development. Wow. A young golfer's development, right? Practicing the technical part. Everything that has to do with them becoming better golfers from a technical standpoint right? We're great. Athletes are great, really most of them at getting themselves physically ready. They know they have to be physically ready to be the best they can be. Awesome. What a lot of people have the problem in, and it's more than any, because there's a lack of understanding is the thinking part. Wow. For any young athlete to develop to their full potential, they have to also develop their social end of things, which happens a lot with in individual sports, it's a little bit more difficult because there's a social communication part with coaches and, and maybe other people, other athletes that they train with. Um, but the biggest one is the psychological. And so when I say commitment is key number three or step number three is that you have to understand that you have to commit to all four areas of development if you're really serious about being the best young golfer you want to be. Because if you leave out this or this, you're leaving a lot of chips on the table, like I, like I say. Wow. Because, you know, you could still be, and I'll bring it to my next screen here. You could still be a, um, yeah, so I'm just going to skip through this quickly. You could still be playing at a high level, right? Because you're doing all the technical stuff, the physical part, the social part. And you might have some psychological stuff in there that you talk about, parents talk about, coaches talk about, something's happening there. Mm -hmm. And you might be at a good level, right? However, you won't reach your peak performance or full potential unless you add some sort of real focused, committed effort into improving your psychological aspect of your development. Wow. And that's when it gets you to your full potential. Okay. So this could be awesome, but it could be untouchable, mm. right? It could be good to excellent. It could be not very good to good. It could be really having a tough year to, okay, it's not bad, but I could be better. It all, every, every athlete, every golfer is in a different stage in, in this process. So, so that's, that, that's number three. That's number three. All right. Yeah. Give us key so, number, key number sorry, three. Sorry. So just, just to wrap that up. So then basically what, what a young golfer needs to do is they need to find 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes in a week and find a way to develop their mindset. What, what I call brain training. That's what commitment is. Yeah. Finding a little, a little space within that week to mm -hmm. be able to add this as part of their scheduled training. So they have the training that they go to when they go practice golf. Some probably have a schedule when they go with a, a personal trainer or maybe to the gym. Exactly. And now they have to schedule something for brain training. That's commitment number three. Okay. And before, I, before we go to key number, number four, uh, Coach Gad, What's the, what's one of the best ways to train psychologically? I mean, is it videos? Is it YouTube? I mean, what's, what's the best way to train on that? I would say the easiest one. So it doesn't become a burden to anybody is very simply going online, using Google, mm -hmm. punch in sports psychology for athletes, sports psychology for young athletes and read one or two articles a day. That's the easiest, simplest way of doing it, for sure. You, you don't have to go out there and buy a book. You don't have to go there and do anything that, you know, might make it where 
your young athlete's just not going to do it. How much, how long it's going to take to write, to read an article? 10, 15 minutes. Right. Um, maybe another five minutes just to understand the key points. And that's sort of what, but bare minimum, a young golf 